Oh, it felt pretty scary, I must admit. I had a good, I, in, in preparation for the role, was probably the most scared I've ever been in going into any movie. Um, but um, <clears throat> it's one of those lovely things. It's the, the, the day before first day of work is always petrifying. And then as soon as you get there and you realize that everyone is actually lovely and it's not, um, yeah, and that um, the character that we created for this Sarah Connor is so different to Linda's. And not, I mean, the, uh, the, the circumstance which we find her in is so different to Linda, what Linda and, and James Cameron created, that there was a lot of room to kind of, to put my own mark on it, which made it less daunting. Well, there was lots of physical attributes that Sarah has that I don't at all. Um, so it was, a, it, was a, it was a brilliant couple of months of getting to grips with guns and making that feel like I had done it for 10 years. Um, and then those guns are pretty heavy. So a lot of strength training to just, to just simply be able to, um, to have the skill set that Sarah does. So it was brilliant because in one sense, it's, um, it's, uh, it's kind of, it's, it's, a, it's a great skill to learn, but more than anything, it was a way of me getting into Sarah Connor's shoes. Yeah, it was pretty surreal. He is incredibly iconic. Um, and so there was a lot of fear and trepidation in coming up to that first meeting. But then he just puts everyone at ease. As soon as he walks into the room, he's just so easygoing and relaxed and comfortable in his own skin. And that in turn makes everyone else comfortable. Yeah, it's brilliant. I mean, any time that you, any time that anyone's flagging on set, which sometimes happens, you're doing long hours, um, and right, you know, when you reach the reach the halfway point, it kind of, you just have to summon even more strength. But when you look around you and you know that you've got an amazing ensemble to back you up, and when someone was falling, someone else was coming in to kind of help boost morale and, and get the energy levels back up again. It was just so lucky. As a girl, I hate to say it, um, it was more getting to see his professionalism on camera. Because whilst working out and doing guns is something that obviously I will do for this role and for others, uh, I'm an actor first and foremost. And so getting to see the way that he is so professional on set and how he handles people on set, that was kind of the most inspiring thing. It turns it on its head in that it is very much a continuation of the much beloved one and two that James Cameron created. Um, but giving the characters an entire new backstory, situation, circumstance, so that you see a whole, you see them in a whole new light and you see those relationships turned on their heads. And so whilst the, uh, the characters are still exactly the same, the parts of them that you see are totally different. Um, so I think that's one of the that's one of the biggest things, and and the fact that it's um it's a Terminator franchise. It's it's got the stunts, it's got the action, but it's got a huge amount of heart and sensitivity as well. It allows Sarah Connor to be both badass and human, which I think is a really important aspect, especially for me coming into the role to try and um, make the differences between what I'm what I've done and what Linda Hamilton did as well. Is that you you see a much more um, sensitive human attribute through the eyes of the relationship between father and daughter, and uh, and it's, a, it's an incredibly special one. She um, she watched you know it starts pretty dark. She watched her parents die when she's nine years old to be saved by this man by this Terminator, um, who then promises to save her forever and ever and ever. So that's a kind of a, a pretty strong bond. It starts as uh, as people are ready for. It starts with um, with a hark back to what has already been, and then you get the the huge change, especially as Sarah Con is introduced. You get that whole setup, but then it's an enormous role reversal. So the the kind of the look on on Kyle Reese's face when he's sort of this is not what he was expecting at all. That um, that that change is brilliant, um, and then jumping forward to the new threat the threat that we that that we are now aware of and then when you get there to have the savior of humankind turn out to be the savior and salvation of skynet is another huge twist um, that uh that just projects this movie and and it it, it, it it just kind of has this movie never stop and just keeps going I think to see the, the, the homage and the respect that we've paid to the first two, but to also see those new relationships 
and to see a bloody kick-ass girl not be a damsel in distress, but uh, but save but save someone else's life, which is pretty fun. It was really good. Um, again, same age, coming at it from this sort of from from the new standpoint. So we were very much like. Uh, yeah, brothers in arms in that sense, because you've got Arnold who's, who created the Terminator. He knows his way around that set, he knows his way around that character. And then we kind of newbies turn up and sort of are trying to reprise these roles. So it was, it was, it was gorgeous, it was just lovely. Uh, lots of banter, lots of fun. Hello, Valerie here with another So You Think You Know movies. Now, let's start with onset injuries with Jennifer Lawrence being left temporarily deaf in one ear while shooting The Hunger Games Catching Fire. Sorry, what was that you said? Ah. And Nikki Reed injured her hands during the shooting of Twilight and had to wear gloves to cover them up. Okay, moving on, billionaire cameos with Sir Richard Branson having a blink and you miss it cameo in Casino Royale. Download our Film is Now app, available for both Android and iOS. Bye-bye.